Hello, one and all. My name is Christopher Weiss. I'm a professional actor and voiceover artist from Finland. Now, during these very cold winter nights, we need something fun to do. And I've been doing some really, really fun things in the last few days. And I wanted to do this video for quite a long time because I've been using AI and I've been using my voice for a long time. But I haven't been able to do this video because technology hasn't been there. Now, the technology now is here and I'm able to do this video, so I'm really excited. So let's let's jump in for the ride. Now, a lot of you probably have used uh, tools like Eleven Labs, which is great. And even their custom voices like Daniel, our British deep voice is is pretty good. And when we generate just a random text, it sounds Once upon like a time this. in a quaint little town lived a young boy named Benny. Benny was not like the other children. While they played with toys, Benny played with microscopes and petri dishes. His bedroom looked more like a miniature laboratory than a place to sleep. Now, this sounds pretty good. Um, and the actual tonality of the voice is, is, is really good. And no complaints there. You can do some changes in the settings and so on. So for a, a, a default voice, this is pretty nice. But the issue here is that uh, it's it doesn't really sound natural because there are certain inflictions and certain small things that we have in we are used to in a human voice like how it goes down in, in the end of the sentence how it how it kind of like how it flows so uh, if it's not there we, we get into the uncanny valley where it's it's kind of there but it's not really so it still feels way off and that's the case with Daniel here so if I would do this uh, same, I would I would read it. Let's pick up the, the text. Let's do it from here. Once upon a time, in a quaint little town, lived a young boy named Benny. Benny was not like the other children. While they played with toys, Benny played with microscopes and petri dishes. His bedroom looked more like a miniature laboratory than a place to sleep. So this has a much more kind of natural flow and I didn't want to overdo it and I didn't want to put in my British fake British accent here. Not yet, you'll hear it later. But now, now we have something that we can utilize for the next step of the process. So let's put Benny here. Now we can go over to speech to speech. And we can either record audio or we can we can just kind of go from here. We can put in Oh, why don't you want to go, Benny? There we go. And now we have Daniel, we have 11 English. Yes, everything is good and we can do generate. Once upon a time, in a quaint little town, lived a young boy named Benny. Ben was not like the other children. While they played with toys, Benny played with microscopes and putrid dishes. His bedroom looked more like a miniature laboratory than a place to sleep. See, that sounds instantly much more natural. So that's just a small part of what we're going to do today. Uh, but I'm excited so far. How about you? So I prepared a few other uh, fun little <laughs> bits here. Uh, one is the, the theme song for the Prince of Bel-Air. Let's see how Daniel would do that. Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. And this is the original. Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Now, as you notice, these samples that I give it are not they're recorded here in my in my kitchen I don't even have an acoustic uh, you know I, I the walls are just like plain concrete and I don't have a even an external microphone I'm using uh, the MacBook Pro microphone I do even have the standard I could use the voice isolation and it would be a little bit better but this is just plain it's just to show you that as long as the target samples are good quality then the source sample doesn't really matter you could probably even do this with a with a phone and actually a next project 
that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do ADR for a movie that I was in, and and the original sound is there, but it's just not synced. It just doesn't work, so I have to redo it. But it's gonna be an issue for me to get into the same kind of acoustics again. So the acoustics of the target uh, audio, in this case Daniel, which is pre-made by uh, by Eleven Labs is fairly good <clears throat> and that's why it sounds good regardless of, of the source material that I'm, I'm providing now but let's get a little bit freaky let's do the same thing but let's do Dorothy ideas at the beginning points of all fortunes now these are all now British or Irish just for a very specific reason I'm going to come to later but there are some other cool ones here as well and you can obviously do your own voice or do other people's voices that you have permission to don't do people's voices if you don't have permission to to do them. Let's see how this sounds when Dorothy reads the same the same text. It should take about 10 seconds or something like that for it to generate. Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. It sounds even a little bit better if the accent, the, the the target accent is also American. Uh, it has a little bit of better twang to it, but this one works. I wanted to focus a little bit on Shakespearean stuff or Shakespearean-esque uh, stuff today. So here's my favorite sonnet, 118. And let's have Daniel read. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is when I read it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the I Okay, you get the gist. So this is how it sounds when I read it when I read it a little bit, you know, theatrically just to kind of prove my point. And we'll see how it sounds when Daniel reads it forth with his perfect British accent. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the dolly buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. Sounds pretty cool to me. And the good thing about whenever you generate stuff here, they're all they're all saved here, so you can play them afterwards. You don't have to, you don't have to download them if you don't want to. Let's go back to here, and then let's do one more. Let's do a little bit over the top, like that wasn't already, and let's do a to be or not to be from Hamlet, which actually isn't the same scene. He holds the skull. In case you didn't know, it's a different scene. Now you know. So let's see how Daniel... To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Okay. That sounds pretty cool. This is how obnoxious it sounded when I did it. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Okay. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, that was me. Yeah, so so let's see uh, if we put uh, Lily. The fox has many tricks. The hedgehog uh, has a, but one, but that is the best of all. A raspy female voice reading. To be, or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer. The slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. Hmm. Okay. Decent. Let's try 
Uh, we had Lily. Let's try Dorothy. To be or not to be. Hmm. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Nice. Now there is a limit here. You can only do 24 seconds at this time and I'm sure this will go up in the near future. Let's do one more. We had Finn here, which is a, a British or an Irish sailor suitable for video games, but I think I think Shakespeare works as well. And I chose these four characters for a very specific reason. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. See, we're getting all those same infliction, inflictions and you're getting the same length because it, it, it is using that same uh, original audio, that same original speech f for you to, uh, to generate this. You're kind of basically just gluing uh, like, a, like a theme. You're putting a filter. You're basically, you're putting a filter on top of your voice. Now, imagine what you can do with this. Imagine you can just read whatever and put a very professional uh high quality voice on top of that so now we're getting to the really juicy part and what i really actually want to show you and this is something that i never done before i just came up with the idea tonight and i wanted to shoot it out it's 27th of, of november it's 9 42 p.m here <clears throat> in finland I just started bouncing ideas with ChatGPT about creating a scene, a Shakespeare-inspired scene. I wanted something with a lot of different kinds of emotion that I could play and, and, and see how this would, would turn out. And four different characters, they correlate, excuse me, correlate with those British voices that I have here. So I have Lord Malcolm and once powerful, noble, now betrayed and dethroned. And we have Edgar, young male, Lord Malcolm's ambitious nephew who has usurped his throne. And we have Lady Isabella, Edgar's sister, torn between her love for her family and her moral compass. And Duchess Eleanor, the wise, long-serving confidant of Lord Malcolm, witness to this castle's darkest secrets. Now... Obviously, I could do a play or I could do like a, a, a audio book, an audio scene with that kind of voice. I could play them even further and put them into characters, but they would still be me. Like I'm not a good impressionist in the in the sense that I could convincingly do all of these four in a, in a way that they would sound actually like four different voices. They would sound like me doing four different characters and that would probably pass. Uh, that would probably pass as uh, as decent, but I wanted to, to try out <clears throat> this. So I, I created this text, and then I put it into I put it into <coughs> pages, and then we're gonna go through. Now my voice is a little bit <coughs> hoarse. <laughs> And it's getting late, but I really wanted to do this tonight. So I'm going to play this through. It's not going to be perfect. It's probably going to be overacted as hell. And bear with me. Uh, we're going to go through the process and you're going to see the end result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this script as these different characters one by one. And that's why I, I, I colored these lines so I know which character. And it's it's it would be voice... In, in a voice matter, it would be easier to do them one character at a time. <clears throat> but for the sense of flow, and for the sense of energy, and for the sense of of portrayal, and for the sense of, of, of distinct varieties in how this flows, <clears throat> I'm just going to re read this through. And I'm not going to change my voice that much. 
because the voice is going to be changed by uh, Eleven Labs afterwards. So I'm more going to focus on <clears throat> delivering the quality of the emotion and the quality of the character and not as much the uh, the actual voice. Okay? <clears throat> and bear with me, this is going to be overacted. Oh, treachery! My own blood! The serpent beneath my feet! Uncle, the crown was wasted on your indecisive brow. Power demands action, not weary hesitation. Brother, what madness has seized your heart? We are family. Isabella, even the purest rose grows thorns to survive. The ghosts of this hall, whispers of a time when love reigned, now drowned in this storm of ambition it is. Child, can you not see? Your brother's heart is poisoned, his soul lost to the dark allure of power. But he is still my brother, my blood. The time for talk is over. The throne accepts no weakness. Then let fate cast its final die. No, brother. To claim the throne over our uncle's life is a line I will not allow you to cross. Isabella, you would defy me for him. Enough. This castle has seen too much bloodshed. Edgar, look upon your uncle not as a rival, but as the mentor who once cradled you in his arms. But the crown... True power lies not in a crown, but in the hearts of the people. What king can rule when his kingdom lies in ruins of his own making? What have I become? In seeking the throne, I, I nearly lost my soul. Brother, it is not too late. Let us heal these wounds together. Edgar, a king must first learn to be a man. Let this be your first lesson. Uncle, I, uncle, I, I, I beseech you, I seek your forgiveness. I lost myself in ambitious shadow. Uncle, I, I beseech you. I seek your forgiveness. I lost myself in ambition's shadow. You have a good heart, Edgar. Let it guide you better than it did me. And so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll cut these pieces and export them as one by one, as Edgar one, uh, Lady one, and, and so on. And then I go, go through and we'll get to the next step. So, so now I went through all of the clips, I clipped them up and I exported them one by one in order and also with the character names. So I would remember which ones of these are uh, pertaining to what character here in 11 laps because I didn't I could rename them you know it would maybe be easier in that sense but now we have Daniel is Malcolm we'll put in Malcolm and we'll get him generated oh treachery my own blood the serpent beneath my feet 
So now I'll go through all of these and uh, then I'll show you the result. So the files that are downloaded from 11 labs, they appear as MP3s because I have the creator pass. Uh, if you go one tier higher, you can also get them as, as 44 kilohertz PCM wave files but this is what i have right now so then i then i rename them or i named them the same as the original files just so they make sense to me where they are in this uh, script so to speak and i can double check that i actually have them in the right order so let's see through the yep so they're all good so now I can just kind of add them. <clears throat> I like to use a zero like this just to make sure that they're up there. There we go. Now we have them here in order. Like that. Obviously, if I would do this in, uh, in longer chunks, uh, which might be easier, especially when um, the service allows for longer longer pieces at the time. But now I'll start going through just kind of the the tempo of of the thing, and I'll I'll do that first, and then you'll get to hear the the, the final piece. So let's skip through this part as well. <laughs> Okay, so I notice here while I'm, I'm I'm editing through it, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek here. I'm I'm, uh, I'm 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 wanting a little bit more emotion than I'm that I'm getting. So there's a part here where I nearly lost my soul. I nearly lost my soul. This Ed wounds together. Edgar and before Edgar and before Malcolm comes in and says Edgar, I'd like to have a little bit of a cry from Edgar. So let's see if we can make that happen. Let's see if we can make. Edgar cry. Okay, a little bit overactive, but perhaps serves the purpose. Let's do um, 20 Edgar cry. There we go. Then we'll put him up. Put this in original. Edgar cry and Edgar was thin. We'll see how that sounds. Okay. So <laughs> apparently there is there is some kind of like I'm I'm new to this technology. I don't know how this works, and and I haven't really seen any of you know white papers or any kind of research on, on how this actually works. So I'm just assuming, but it looks like uh, it's it's translating parts of that sound into text and trying to interpret it as text. Because there's a few, you'll, you'll see it in the final, or you'll hear it in the final thing, where it it kind of uh, assumes there are, it's, it's different words that I'm actually saying. And maybe because, you know, the quality and whatnot, but as you hear here, this is not a cry that is based on a sound. It's trying to interpret it into uh, some kind of voice or some kind of um, letters. And oh, but that's fine. Let's let's have Edgar let's have Edgar cry in that way. And then we'll go back here and we'll get Edgar crying and I'll get back to work and I'll show you in just a bit. Okay, now I'll go, I'll go and, and find a song. Oh, treachery. My own blood.
Okay. So now here we here we're done. It's not perfect, obviously. This is just a kind of like a first draft, uh, working on it for like 20 minutes, something like that. And uh, this is just to show kind of what you can do with this. I put a couple of tracks, just kind of give it a little bit of a vibe. Uh, you could obviously do it without. Um, and I'd love to see what you come up with uh, by playing around and I'll, and I'll keep playing. And, and whenever I, I find something cool or create something nice, I'll, I'll post that. But for now, if you find something nice and you are able to create something cool, uh, send send it on uh, send it in a link or send it on a private message and I'll be sure to check it out. So here we go. This is now called uh, the track was called Sacrifice. So this is now called the Sacrifice of Duty, a Shakespearean tragedy in one act, written, played, edited, directed, produced, and <coughs> published by Christopher Weiss. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, treachery, my own blood, the serpent beneath my feet. Uncle, the crown was wasted on your indecisive brow. Our demands action, not weary hesitation. Brother, what madness has seized your heart? We are family. Isabella. Even the purest rose grows thorns to survive. The ghost of this form whispers of a time when love reigned. Now, drowned in this storm of ambition it is. Child, can you not see? Your brother's heart is poisoned, his soul lost to the dark allure of power. But he is still my brother, my blood. The time for talk is over. The throne accepts no weakness. Then let fate cast his final die. No, brother. To claim the throne over our uncle's life is a lie I will not allow you to cross. Isabel, you would defy me for him. Enough. This castle has seen too much bloodshed. Edgar, look upon your uncle not as a rival, but as the mentor who once cradled you in his arms. But the crown. True power lies not in a crown, but in the hearts of the people. What king can rule when his kingdom lies in ruins of his own making? What have I become? In seeking the throne, I, I nearly lost my soul. Brother, it is not too late. Let us heal these wounds together. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar, a king must first learn to be a man. Let this be your first lesson. Uncle, I, I beseech you. I seek your forgiveness. I lost myself in ambition's shadow. You have a good heart, Edgar. Let it guide you better than it did me. And end scene. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'm impressed with what you can do with this tool. And you can say a lot about my acting skills and my editing skills. But I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you had it too. Keep in touch if you want to see more. Signing off for now. Cheers.